the intro paragraph, it says that the very first thing that you should always do when you log into the course is you, st you should stop whatever you're doing and you should read the announcements. If you click on the announcements tab, right now you only see one announcement. Well, that depends on what date you're reading this. So I'm recording this before the semester starts and I'm going to publish the course early. So if you would like to, you can watch this video early. But up until the first day of the semester, you only see one announcement that says, hey, I published the course. Once the semester officially starts and the fall 2019 semester starts on August 21st, you'll see that there are a series of announcements that you need to read. Yes, there are a lot. There are six additional announcements to read. I will never send six announcements every single week, um, but to start the semester, there's a lot of different things that are going on. So in this video, I'd like to go through those announcements and just pick out some key highlights. You should still read through them on your own. So the first announcement that you should read is the Getting Started in Art 1200 InDesign software announcement. It includes all the information you need. It has the videos that I'm recording right now. As you can see on the screen, these are the old videos. They'll be replaced with these new ones once I publish them. It explains how to get started, so you should always log into the course two to three times per week. It explains that there is a course schedule that we're going to follow, and if you click on the link, it will take you to that page. I recommend printing the schedule. We'll talk about the schedule in more detail in another video. It also explains what to do this week so that you can make a mental checklist of the things that you need to work on. During the fall semester, um, the semester starts on a Wednesday, so we only have half a week during the first week. So for the first week activities, all you have to do are module 00, getting started in art 1200. They are the getting used to the class things like upload a profile picture, log into the course, complete a syllabus quiz, that kind of stuff. It shouldn't take more than two hours if you do it really thoroughly. So make sure that you take the time to do that because it sets you up for success in the course. One of the last things that's important in this announcement is the idea of contact hours. And I get a lot of feedback from students that you know, they spend too much time each week working on course content. And when I ask them, well, how many hours did you spend? And they'll say, oh, I spent three hours. It took me four hours to do that module. Um, based on this being an online class, um, it could take you up to nine hours per week to do the coursework because of the definition of contact hours. In a traditional on-campus course that might be three credits, it would be three hours of in-class lecture, one hour for each credit, and then it could be up to three hours of homework, I'm sorry, two hours of additional homework per credit. So every credit that you take should be about three hours of work per week. This is a three hour, three credit hour course, so it could be up to nine hours. Now, not that it matters too much, but our classes are actually considered what is lecture lab. And all that means is that your expectation of workload is still nine hours per week, but instead of having one hour in class and two hours of homework per credit, we actually are in class for longer. So our three credit class has five hours of in-class time and only four hours of homework. So if you were taking this on campus, you shouldn't expect to have nine hours of homework. You should only expect to have up to four hours of homework outside of class time. Okay, if we go back to the announcements tab, I'm going to open up all of these at once because I'm not going to go through them in complete detail. I just want to point a few things out. So there is an announcement for submitting coursework. You don't even have to read it right now. All you have to do is make a mental note that you need to come back to this announcement if you're having trouble posting your coursework. Um, for this class, we're going to be submitting digital artwork files. And Canvas doesn't allow you to save or upload a large amount of data to the Canvas platform. So if you start trying to post everything through Canvas for the course, you're going to hit a point in the semester where you get locked out of Canvas and you can't upload anything else. So this is an alternate way to submit your coursework. You can upload it to Dropbox or to Google Drive. And then instead of submitting your artwork, you'll submit a link to your artwork and I'll download it when it's time to grade it. I don't, I don't require students to memorize keyboard shortcuts and key commands because I teach lots of different software programs. I've taught InDesign and Illustrator and Photoshop and Corel Painter and Quark Express and all the key commands are slightly different from program to program. 
or some of them are different. Um, there are universal key commands. But if you're somebody who really likes key commands or somebody who has some experience in InDesign and you want to learn how to speed up your design process, you can download this InDesign um, keyboard shortcut worksheet and you can print it and keep it in your notebook. This course is considered an open educational resource course, which means that we try to make the course as free or close to free as possible for all students. There is no textbook. I've created uh, comprehensive slideshows and lecture videos in lieu of a textbook, so you don't have to buy that anymore. Um, in addition, you need to have access to InDesign. And if you choose the free options, we have ways for you to access the software for free. One option is SLCC All Access, and if you click on this video here, it will go through the steps for logging into All Access. In addition to using All Access, you can use any computer at any SLCC campus. So if you live down in Daybreak, you can go to the Jordan campus, which is right there. Or if you live downtown, you can go to the Library Square or the South City campus, um, and you can get on to SLCC All Access. And then above and beyond that, if you're at South City, maybe you're taking some on-campus classes and some online classes, you can use any uh, visual art and design computer lab. If there's an open seat, if you ask politely and you ask the teacher, do you have an extra seat? Can I sit and use the computer? Uh, we are expected to be flexible to that. We also have room 1-180 at the South City campus. It's a computer lab and it's supposed to be open as many hours in the week as possible, but you have to check the door for the weekly hours. And then if that lab is closed, directly across the hall in room 1-177, we have a couple computers, and um, we are trying to keep that lab open as many hours as possible, and we're also trying to keep it open for hours that the 1-180 lab might be closed. So see if 1-177 is closed, try 180 and vice versa. And then above and beyond that, my office is in room 1-173, which is inside a classroom. So my office is 1-173B inside the 1-173 classroom. Anytime I'm in the office, I will leave the classroom door open. And if you'd like to, you can come in and you can quietly work on the computers. Um, so you're welcome to use that classroom as well. When we start to work on our projects, so starting with module one, you'll have to print your projects and you'll have to create what's called a color separation. I don't expect you to understand what that is or have any idea what that means right now, but when the time comes to physically print your color separations, you can reference this announcement for instructions. In addition, I will accept digital color separations if you submit them as postscript files. So the only two options are to physically print your color separations and then you can like take a picture of them and submit them online. Or if you know how to make a postscript file, you can submit postscript color separations. But I wanna emphasize that the expectation is that you will physically print your color separations. If you choose to submit electronic color separations, they one, must adhere to all the same requirements as the physical color separations. And two, um, you need to troubleshoot that on your own. If you're having issues and your computer will not allow you to make color separations, I can't troubleshoot that for you because all computers have different settings and different things installed. If you're choosing to make digital color separations, you're choosing to figure out how to do that. But with that said, um, if you come to this announcement, I have some kind of cheat sheets down here for you and different options that can work for creating color separations. So there's four different options that you can try and see if you can make the color separations. And then last but not least, this video is getting long. Um, most students taking this class are enrolled in some sort of certificate or degree at the college um, and they are registered for like a certificate of completion or higher, an associate degree, etc. In addition to those, the School of Arts Communication and Media, or rather the Dean of the School of Arts Communication and Media, offers what are called Certificates of Achievement. They're like little tiny mini certificates that you get a physical um, certificate for and you can put it on your resume as an accomplishment when you're trying to apply for a job. Um, Art 1200 is linked to three of those certificates so by taking this class you're one-third of the way to the computer design essentials, one-third of the way to the introduction to design, and one-third of the way to the print production certificates. Um, if you're doing any degree at Salt Lake Community College in the art department, you're probably going to take Art 1120 Design 
And so you would just need one more class, typography and layout for the design one. And every single student in the art department takes Photoshop software uh, for their degree. And so if you take InDesign this semester and Photoshop next semester, you're just one class away from that other certificate. Uh, the catch here is that the only way to get their certificate is to fill out a form on the school's website. So you need to click on the link provided and fill out the form and then you will get a certificate in the mail. And you can even fill out the form before you've completed the certificate. If you're mid-semester and you're going to be finishing up the certificate, you can fill it out and at the end of the semester they'll check all the people on the list and anyone who qualifies will receive their certificate in the mail. Okay, take a few minutes to read through all the announcements in complete detail and when you're done we'll move on to the next video.